Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime. My name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash I don't work here lady where people tell us their craziest stories on when they got mistaken for being an employee at somewhere they didn't work. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some reddit stories. Shopping for groceries at 3am to avoid people? Nope. Pertinent backstory. I have severe anxiety issues that can cause me a great deal of discomfort. My whole body starts to shake, I get cold chills like I've got the flu, and I get dizzy. But because of other medications I'm on, I can't take benzodiaphamines, which, unfortunately for me, seem to be the only anxiety medications to even make a dent in these fits of anxiety. I have no way of knowing what is going to trigger them, or when they'll happen as they're rarely over the same thing twice. They happen infrequently enough that I can lead a more or less normal life, but one of the things that definitely has triggered my anxiety more than once, at least since my therapist had me start keeping an anxiety journal log, is trying to accomplish a task with a list of steps or objectives while dealing with a crowd, e.g. public speaking slash performance, bartending, being a cook or chef in a restaurant setting, and one of the most important to this story, grocery shopping. So onto the r slash I don't work here part. The time, 3am today. The place, 24 hour grocery. We'll call it Terrace Heating. The cast, me, well that's me, duh. Karen with the I don't want to speak to your manager hairdo, but we'll just call her Kay. But seriously, why do they all have this haircut? An employee, someone who actually does work there. So I'm minding my own business, doing my grocery shopping in a nice, big, empty store, save a small handful of employees restocking shelves. I get all of my items that I need, mostly just went for coffee, milk, eggs, bread, the essentials, and make my way to the front of the store. This isn't my first time shopping there at 3am, so the staff has gotten used to the quiet guy that does his shopping at an odd hour. And they also know that I use the self-checkout, so there's no need to stick close to the only open register that requires one of them. I go to the self-checkout and begin scanning my items. That's when Kay comes walking up to the row of registers with a basket that's overflowing with stuff to the point where she should be using an actual rolling cart. Standing near the single lane with its light on signalling that the register is open. She stands there for a minute or two while I'm scanning my stuff. And I notice she's staring at me with an expression that I could only describe as if she was tapping her foot and pointing to her watch. As if to say, hurry up, but with her face. Sorry ma'am, but self-checkout really is the best way to go at this hour. The cashier is off helping stock shelves. Karen, with a frustrated sigh, Ah, well, then why don't you do it? You're not doing anything important. Me, taken aback, I'm sorry ma'am, I can't. Karen, cutting me off, You can do whatever it is you're doing when you're done ringing me up. This basket is getting really heavy. I don't... Karen, yelling now, Just ring me up. Or I'll go find your manager and have you fired for being so rude to a customer. Me, anxiety starting to well up inside, but, but, just ring me up. Me, increasing volume a bit, I don't, just ring me up. This goes on for a few moments, me standing there, stammering and sputtering, trying to tell this insufferable woman muffin that I don't work here. And she keeps yelling chant, until finally, with the desperation to try and stave off a full anxiety attack, which would mean sitting in my car, shaking and trying not to puke, hoping desperately that it passes before any of my groceries spoil, I reach deep down inside myself and pull out every bit of rage and hate that I have for all Karens everywhere. Me, bellowing like some giant bearded elder god of pure hatred. I don't work here, you stupid woman. Use the goddamn self-checkout like a normal human being and shut up. It's 3am. You're lucky these people are even here at all for you to be able to shop. 
It was between my rage out and her yelling chant that an employee within earshot came to see what was going on. Whoa, hey, what's going on over here? Karen, who is standing there with a shocked and galled, well I never, look on her face, recovers quickly at the sight of an employee. This rude cashier refuses to ring me up, and he even yelled at me. I want to see your manager. I'm sorry miss, but he doesn't work here. Don't give me that, I've seen him here before. Just last night he was walking around with a cart full of things, putting them away. True, the night before I went for the same items I was there for this time, but my card was declined because my paycheck hadn't cleared yet. So, after I found an employee to void my transaction from the self-checkout, I decided to put my stuff back myself, since they already had so much to do. No, I'm certain he doesn't work here. He must have been putting things back he decided he didn't need. Maybe you've just never seen him before. Get your manager, he'll know who this man is. What? Your employee is evolving. Congratulations, your employee evolved into manager. I am the manager, and I can assure you he does not work here, nor has he ever worked here. Karen, visibly deflating like a sad balloon, still taped to a mailbox days after a kid's birthday party. Oh, well then, can you ring me up? Miss, you can use the self-checkout right over there. Currently, there are five other self-serve registers open and working. At this point, the altercation caused the... The altercation caused the self-checkout to think I had left, so it suspended my transaction, pending employee intervention to either void or continue it. So now, I'm stuck waiting for their exchange to end so I can ask for help. I don't mind though, as I need time to calm down anyway. I don't trust those things. Besides, the light for this register is on, so it means it's open, right? The manager, clearly incensed, fine. The manager then turns to me. Sir, is everything okay? Huh? Oh, yeah. Just that I need your help. I wasn't finished yet and haven't paid yet. I'm so sorry. Give me one sec. Excuse. The manager, cutting her off firmly. No, you can wait 30 seconds while I help him out with the self-checkout. See, that's why I don't trust those things. The manager and I both chose to ignore that as explaining to her that it's her fault would fall on deaf ears. Manager, after fixing my register, there you go. Thank you so much, sorry for all of this. It's not your fault, you have a wonderful morning. Spoken in a way that's more sincere than I've heard a human being speak to another in a long time, that I truly wanted to give her a hug. Same to you. So, I take my cart out to the car and load everything in, and instead of leaving the cart in one of those cart return corals in the middle of the parking lot, it was closer to just take it back to the store, since the parking lot was so empty, I was able to park really close to the store. I notice another stray cart and go grab that one too. Big mistake. As I'm taking them back in, Kay is coming out. Karen, seeing me pushing carts in the parking lot, I knew it! I knew you were both liars and you work here! I'm going to call corporate and get you all fired! I push the carts back inside and ignore her. Get in my car and go home. Can someone please explain to me exactly why they always have that same hairdo? Maybe they all have the same hairdo because hairdressers have the same opinion on them, all hairdressers actually hate them, and they're like, oh, Karen's coming in again, I know what haircut I'm gonna give her. It's like a warning sign, the hairdressers do the hair all like that, and then people can distinguish them easily. Drunk lady wants to stay, doesn't understand that this is my house and I don't work nights. So, I work at a woman's refuge in a very small town. Women and children stay there when they need to. We also run a woman's group and a girl's group, have a small second-hand clothing store, help women and families set up when they move into a new house, help with transport, food parcels, etc. Basically, we are the go-to if anyone needs help. It's worth noting at this point that when this happened, I had been doing admin every morning and helping with the morning rush as we opened our doors for women to come in and have a shower and do their washing and helped women get their kids enrolled and ready for school each day. 
I had not worked nights or on call for about two years at this point. With the exception of rarely being called in to help out, if we had a new staff member doing a night and they were struggling with the groups of women and children who came in. But still, never stayed the night and never covered the on-call phone. At the time of this story, my partner was away at work. Now, even when I was working nights, I have always drawn a hard line at people coming into my house. I don't like people. I worked with people because there wasn't much else available and I enjoyed helping out the kids and showing them that there is a better way to live and encouraging them to aim for that than follow the path that the majority of their family took. I have never once encouraged any women to come to my house for anything and very firmly turn them away if I catch them approaching my house. If a kid knocks on my door and wants a drink and a snack, I help them out, but not adults. To be honest, I am slightly disgusted at most of the adults in this town for throwing away their money and leaving their kids to scavenge for food and weather appropriate clothing. The amount of times I've seen drunk adults sitting around a campfire with thick coats and jackets while their kids are kicked away to play, shivering and barefoot in shorts and a tank top, it's enough to turn anyone's stomach. I was bundled up on the couch, watching TV, intermittently being distracted by the raging arguments going on across the road. In a small town like this, we have drunk screaming fights in the streets every night. It's odd if you don't hear at least one person acting like a tool outside your house between the hours of 6pm and 8am. This night, I was expecting a bad one because the house diagonally across from mine had a mob drinking in the front yard from about lunchtime. Comes to about 7pm and the screaming and arguing started. I texted the on-call phone a heads up that they would likely get a few calls that night. The police and hospital have it. The refuge does not accept drunk women or women with head injuries. Those have been the rules since we had a drunk client threaten to attack a worker. And the lady nearly passed away on the couch because the hospital didn't disclose the bad concussion she had. It gets to about 11pm and I hear wailing approaching my house. Not a siren. A woman crying because her man tipped out her beer. I'm sitting on the couch, sending out mental signals. Don't do it. Don't you come to my door. Darn, she's at the door. Don't you do it. Don't you knock. Darn, she's gone and knocked on the door now. My dogs are going mental. They're about as social as I am and they hate people coming to the door at night when my partner is away. I went to the door but didn't open it and asked who it was and what they wanted. Drunk lady, or DL, is demanding that I call my work and tell them to come pick her up. I laughed a little. DL is a regular and she knows that A, she ain't coming in because she's drunk. B, she hasn't been assaulted or threatened, she has likely been the aggressor all evening. C, we don't pick up people after dark, ever. And D, I have told her not to come to my house multiple times. I sighed a little at the knowledge that she wouldn't just accept her fate and go along. She was definitely going to argue and whine and beg all sprinkled with some abuse and a good amount of slurring. I am glad the door is shut. I can smell the reek of her BO and beer seeping through the cracks and I know if it was open, I would be a lot shorter with her and my eyes would be watering. 10 minutes. I was saying the same thing for 15 minutes before I got angry and blew up at her. DL, you shouldn't be at my house. You know you can't go to the center because you are drunk. If you feel unsafe, you need to call the police. And rinse and repeat. And repeat. And repeat. And you get the idea. I finally had enough and thought, you know what, screw this. I don't even care if she complains at work. I'm not on the clock right now. I'm not getting paid for this stuff and my feet hurt. And I yelled at her, get off my property. It's not my fault you're too drunk and dense to understand the same sentence you've heard nearly a hundred times in the last 10 minutes. And you have to the count of three to be gone before I let my dog out and call the police. She's whining and trying to change my mind. So I bellowed, one. There was a pause and she started to plead some more. Two. There's a longer pause 
I can almost hear the gears in her brain sluggishly turning. She's leaning on my front door at this point. I hear her intake of breath and she starts to say, but three. And I slam open the deadbolt and hear the satisfying pitter patter of her running the heck away. I waited about five minutes to see if she understood that I meant it. Then sat back down in my heated blanket nest and finished my movie. Imagine being a fully grown adult and someone uses the classic, you have to the count of three to be gone. That's just really sad. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.